to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Can I tell you, seated here in this auditorium, standing and sitting outside also, thousands of others scattered across this place, there are men and women who desire to make advancement. You call it a shift conference. I assure you by God that nothing will change until you contend for the requisite level of spiritual illumination. I want to make an illustration. Let me have maybe seven of these gentlemen. Anyone? Yes, seven of you. Make sure you are well dressed. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Just come and stand for me here. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them as they come. Please just stand here. I want to give an illustration. Come. Now, watch this. Thank you. We are going to call all these gentlemen different dimensions that you seek. Let's call this man wealth and abundance. Say wealth and abundance. Let's call this man health and wholeness. Let's call this man, what do we call him now? He said the blessing of heaven. Let's call this man favor, beautiful. Let's call this man supernatural power. You know the power of the Holy Spirit? Let's call this man a healthy prayer life. Don't forget what I'm calling you, right? Let's call this man a sound word life. Let's call this man longevity, all right? So this is a representation of all the dimensions that you need captured in your Christian experience for it to be meaningful because the Bible says, add this to this, add this to this. He said, if these things are bound in you, it, they will make that you are neither unfruitful. Is that true? Now, this man right here is trusting God for or you are trusting God for this dimension. What did I say you are? Wealth and abundance. This is a major one. Because most people seated here. If I ask you to submit your prayer request. 60% of it is related to these finances. Am I right on that? Apologies for the weather. Don't worry. Someday you will rejoice at this testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, but Are we together now? You understand what we're dealing with here? That is that rain? What do we do with those outside? Okay, here's the advice. Let's 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 take a minute to just um, walk on the various. There are thousands of people outside. This is what I may advise. Um, if it gets if it gets very bad, the very least they can do is to just stand and at least use their seats for a covering. Momentarily. Are we together? There are thousands of people. I'm not sure there's any place they can be moved into if um, the rain comes. But I will advise that if for any reason the weather gets too harsh, it may be advisable to make that sacrifice and at least use their seats to get some temporary succor. And then maybe for nursing mothers and so on and so forth, we may want to move them to any auditorium at all. It doesn't matter. We have to do that because it's just the reality of the weather. Hallelujah. Apologies for the sacrifice. It may be a harsh weather, but for some of us, this is how we started with God. Though. We started outside and on the ground. So this is just a reminder. It's nothing new at all. We flogged it out with destiny outside on the ground. So thank God for what he's done today. But if duty calls to go back to that template, it is 
still not an embarrassment because that's where he found us from. Hallelujah. Are we together? So let me continue so we find somewhere to pray. Even if we wrap up, you can't run anywhere, so you are trapped for good. Hallelujah. This gentleman here represents wealth and prosperity. This gentleman here represents health and wholeness. Remember, you need this to live long. This gentleman here represents favor. This gentleman here represents supernatural power. This gentleman here represents a healthy prayer life. This gentleman here represents a sound word life. This gentleman here represents longevity. Now watch this. Do you know that every one of these dimensions has the requisite level of light that empowers you to walk in its reality? The principles that make for favor is not the same principle that makes for longevity. So I can know what makes for favor and yet stand the risk of cutting my life short because I do not have the high level of spiritual illumination. I can be healthy, but my prayer life may be dying because the principles that make for an effective prayer life are not necessarily the same that make for health. I can eat well. I can listen to the counsel of a doctor. I can exercise myself. Those are the principles that can help my physical body to live long. But I can toy with my prayer life and with a healthy body, one demon spirit can get you out of the way. Now listen very carefully. Many of us are seated here, others sitting or standing outside. Can I tell you the truth? Your assignment if you desire to shift to new dimensions is to contend with God for the levels of spiritual illumination that correspond to the various areas of your life where you desire growth. I am a man of God and I desire growth in my church. There are spiritual principles that control it. Intention and desire may not be the only principle. You may need to know the principles allocated. Can I tell you, do not say it is bouchy, it is a harsh environment. It's not true. Tonight has proven it's not true. You may be saying there is no favor. Nobody wants to bless me just because people are wicked. No, there is something you don't know that has not translated to a grace you are carrying to produce that result. The same person who will refuse to give you resources will go to someone else and be on his knees and say, let me sow into your life. So the person was not greedy. His greed is relative to your ignorance. Is someone learning? Let me ask you an honest question right now. How many areas of your life can you point at? How do I know, by the way, that I am experiencing darkness, absence of results? Very simple. The clearest litmus test of the presence of darkness in any area of your life is absence of results. And for many, absence of consistent results. Because in this kingdom, consistent results is proof of mastery. Are we learning now? When I started with God, please pay attention. When I started with God, I became aware of the sheer extent of ignorance in my life. Ignorance that came from my background, both sociological and spiritual. The first thing I did with my destiny was to stand by the grace of God and take full responsibility for my destiny. That's what many people have not done. The prodigal son had to take responsibility. He said, how many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Here's what he said, I will arise. Everybody say responsibility. Please shout it, say responsibility. For as long as you are still blaming your father, still blaming your mother, still blaming idol worship, still blaming Bauchi state, 
still blaming yourself for being a northerner, not a middle belter. If I was born somewhere in London, I would have you had you've been angry and finding flimsy excuses. Can I tell you the first key tonight to rise in light is to be aware that you are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life. kind of Christianity that makes God and others absolutely dependent on the outcome of your life without your personal impute is an irresponsible faith practice. If anything must change, I must know that I am the most active participant in sponsoring that change. So for as long as you keep excusing poverty, how can they allow Sharia? No problem. Is we are like that. You will keep giving the spirits that manage that mindset the license to camp around your thinking and keep repeating circles of pain and poverty. For as long as you get up and you say, no problem, my own is, is just my blood group, it's just my genotype, that's how all of us are in our family. It may be sincere, but is that the truth based on God's word? You can make up your mind. That this pattern of being sick and collapsing in an embarrassing manner must stop and must be on a search for light. Can I tell you this? Listen carefully. Miracles happen instantly, but the preparation for miracles take a long time. Let me repeat myself. Miracles happen instantly, but the preparation for miracles will take a while. Results and manifestations will happen instantly in your life. But the word framework that culminates to that instant result may take a while. Most people do not have the endurance to build a high level of spiritual illumination that will produce results in their lives. Back to my example. You came here tonight you are seated in this auditorium. You are sitting or standing outside. And you are saying, Apostle, if I have a chance to talk to you, I will ask you to pray for me over my finances. This is the area that has refused to answer. Can I tell you, you are not the first to suffer poverty. I repeat, you are not the first to suffer poverty. My Bible says the things that are written aforetime, that they are for our learning so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope that means you can go back from scripture and through the life of people who have gone through that experience and begin to find what light did they find that bailed them out of that nonsense you will read the story of people you are not the first to be cursed apostles because you don't know my grandfather the day you see him you will know why i'm the way i am i sympathize with you for coming out from such a demonic family but go and ask jabez do you know what it means for your own blood mother to be the one to curse you the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren why then it, it reverses the story back and says the mother cursed him simply because she bore him in sorrow but Jabez got to a point in his life he said I can't keep giving excuses he says oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast are we together yes. one thing I know for sure is the day you truly get tired even the devil will respect your determination most people are not tired enough that's why you see you may not believe something I'm about to tell you, but pain is a gift from God to stimulate your advancement. There are dimensions of pain that are demonic and pain has its jurisdiction. When it crosses its jurisdiction, one of the indicators that a woman is ready to give birth is pain. Mothers, am I correct? No matter how healthy you are, that pain factor, in fact, the doctors help to verify there is a level of pain they say no you are almost there you are not there there is the one when that pain comes you will know you are ready to give birth he said as soon as zion travels most of you have not been pushed to the world to an extent where you can say you know what for the next three days i'm not coming out again i must find this secret 
the day five of your children return back home with PTA letter and they say they told us to return to our irresponsible father who claims to be a man of God and cannot pay our school fees it may be a bad scenario but sometimes it can push you and you say do you know what this is it this is the moment Lord I'm going to search for every scripture from Genesis to Revelation that talks about the blessing of the Lord if I came from a poor family let a poor family not come out of me if I came from a family of witchcraft let witchcraft not come out of me I am ready to be that bridge that that ends the old and begins the new almost every great man in the kingdom will tell you he came to a point in his life where he said this is enough if the prodigal son did not deteriorate to a point where he fed with swine he would not see the reason to return back some of you the reason why you came for this conference tonight is what is pursuing you if nothing was pursuing you you probably would laugh and say look at people coming to stand hallelujah you run based on what is pursuing you if it's a fowl that is pursuing you you can jog around and just smile but if it's a lion that is pursuing you if your shoe removes you will not turn back I can buy another one when I'm saved but for now I need rescue this is the place of surrender do to me what you want this is the place of encounter listen can i tell you everyone in one minute i just want you to think think about the many things that have happened around your life think of the many things that have happened around your family that you know needs to change now not tomorrow think of the fact that out of 20 people in your extended family nobody is genuinely born again there is a spirit that makes sure that people don't get serious with god think about that do you want that to continue think of the fact that there are 15 graduates in your life and extended family and nobody seems to have a job because there are altars that sit down crossing their hands and say we have drawn the line let's see who rises man of god think about the work god has committed to you is this the greatest expression does it look like the vision you saw think of your spiritual life the ups and down epileptic prayer life is that a reflection of growth think of your word study life once per month study or study during emergency or study just to fish out a sermon is that the greatest explanation of your Christian life listen I'm saying this because if you don't have a reason to be angry with where you are there is no need to go forward are we together it is when a baby gets tired of staying in the mother's womb that he starts informing her that I have exhausted my my tenancy in your womb and it's time for me to find space is that true i made up my mind as a man of god that my life will be a commendable reflection of the life and the expectations of god i knew it would cost me tears but i was willing to go through it i knew it would cost me time but I was willing to go through it. I knew it would sting my ego because I would come to a point where I would have to be aware of my ignorance. I made up my mind that no matter what it takes, under God, I will not be ashamed if I find out I do not know anything. I will learn with patience and with humility. I burnt the bridges behind me. The narrative that you come from a local environment and a village and you cannot rise to be global. I caused that narrative and I told myself that in my lifetime I will rewrite that narrative. The narrative that you just because your background may not be the best expression, it means you cannot rise. It's a lie. 
I'm here to tell to challenge you. Take all those thinking away and say, Lord, I believe in where you are taking me. I may come from a village and a house where there was no light. We use lantern. So what? Arise, shine, for thy light is come. I'm saying this because seated in this congregation, inside and outside, there is a man of God who God has been, the visions God has shown you, there is nothing in Bauchi that looks like it yet. And the devil is lying to you and say, you of all people, where are you going to? Look at your brothers and your siblings. I'm here to announce to you that light is a lift. It can carry you from one floor, the same way a lift picks you from the base of any building to the highest floor. We don't have so much of these buildings in Nigeria, but when you go across Europe, and several parts of the world you can see buildings that are over 200 and 300 floors and in less than 10 minutes the lift can pick you you may not even know you are moving you just see the numbers counting the lifting power there, there is a power that the earth listen he told abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes your legs may not be able to go but your eyes can look once light you can see it from where you are lift up your eyes from where you are lift up your eyes from that one room lift up your eyes having the rent issue still lift up your eyes with 10 members alone lift up your eyes having everybody around your family confused and not knowing where to go lift up your eyes Man of God, respectfully speaking, let me challenge you. Don't say Bauchi is the reason why ministry is not working. I was in Zaria for more than 11 years doing ministry in the harshest of Islamic conditions. I can tell you there may be something you do not know. Don't say I cannot prosper here. It depends on what you know or you do not know. My assignment is to provoke you tonight that it is time to stop giving excuses and go for light. For someone after this conference, you may need to travel out of Bauchi and go and source for materials and return back and lock yourself for the next three days. Don't just buy useless materials. Buy materials that attend to the area of darkness. Are we together? Lord, I found out that this issue of witches and wizards, I go to bed and I'm seeing myself having dreams, secondary school, writing exams, an old house. What am I doing there? You just sit down and say, one day go better. You are joking. The devil will cut short your life. You go and get relevant materials on the blood, on the victory of the believer, and you settle down and flog it out with destiny. Why is everybody I'm connected to successful people and yet nobody remembers me? There is something called the book of remembrance. You just don't know how to open it. That night, the Bible says, could not King Ahasuerus sleep. He says, he said, bring me the chronicles. And they found there where Mordecai saved his life and was not rewarded. He said, who is in the chamber? They said, her man. He said, come, what should be done to such a man? And he did that the night her man was planning to hang Mordecai by the next day. Don't say people love you. Has it translated to favor? Let me tell you how favor works. When God raises men, I use this example, I think it was in House on the Rock, um, or Tarkot. Let me use it. Two of you come, guys. Watch this. Let me show you how the favor of God works. If you ask me to lift this, I may not be strong enough to lift it by my hand. Is that true? But let me show you how favor works. Can you help me lift it? You are not seeing them. But with minimal effort, it's rising. And it's because I'm the only one you are seeing. So you will think it's just by my effort. But God has positioned Aaron's and hers. So they make the work easy. Please keep it down. Can I tell you the truth? 
hardship has an explanation i hope you know there is a biblical explanation for hardship proverbs 13 15 is the answer to a hard life and the explanation for it the bible says good understanding procured favor it says but the way of the transgressor is hard a transgressor is not a sinner a transgressor is a violator of patterns there are spiritual patterns that make for growth there are spiritual patterns that make for influence ladies and gentlemen we are going to pray tonight i came to tell you it's time to be tired to be tired of where you are and for the sake of God some of you this your being here tonight is an answer to mama's prayer of over 20 years to say Lord I may have failed I don't have knowledge but can you raise somebody the power of light back to that scripture Genesis 1:15. So, all of this represents dimensions that are empowered by light. Now, here is a man. I love God sincerely, but nothing is working in my life. How do you enjoy a Christian experience with a poor prayer life, poor word life, no favor, no strategic relationships? Your health is deteriorated. Are we together? Your life is threatened. That is not an example of the life of victory that Jesus gave us. He says the thief cometh not but for to steal john 10 10 and to kill and to destroy he said but i am come that he might have life and have it more abundantly why do you need to produce results in your life john 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples that means in your bearing fruit you prove that god is not a liar John 15 and verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you to ordain means to legitimize your operation I have legitimized you to go and bear fruit Galatians 1 24 and they glorified God in me that men will look at your life and give glory to Jesus you become an inspiration to people I will always say it this way you become a living epistle that means if someone forgot his bible at home he doesn't get sad when he sees you because you are a continuation of his devotional what he did not understand by reading the bible your life explains it and someone is trying to understand favor and his loss as to how it works you become a personification of favor and God refers you he says you did not understand what I said but study the life of this person he said look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bought you I call him alone and blessed him and increased him there are men that can personify dimensions in God your assignment is to be so illuminated by the light of God's word that you not only become a sign and a wonder but that your life becomes an inspiration to nations they can sit down and your life becomes a spiritual study project that when the devil lies to anybody and say you cannot rise you are the face that God will use to cancel that thought he says look at this man I lifted him right from your place and you say Lord I now believe help my own belief how about the power of God there are many people who want to see the anointing of the Holy Spirit work in their lives they've done everything they know to do but they do not seem to have had a fair grasp on the operation of the anointing and many people continue to get frustrated and sometimes in anger they just believe that everything that is a manifestation of the power of God must be demonic not so do not generalize frustration you may be frustrated but it does not mean there is no way out are we together 
if I try to turn the key to a door, how many of you have had certain doors where it looks like you are the only one who knows what you do to that door to open? You lift it small before you turn it, then bring it down. Someone can come and suffer around that door and it will refuse to open. And you come with mastery. You already know what to do. So just because you are suffering in an area, don't generalize it. Go to them that sell and buy. There are always people that sell. To sell means the people who will give it to you at a cost. The cost is meekness. The cost is humility. Use humility to buy truth. Use meekness to buy truth. Use honor to buy truth. Buy the truth, he says, and sell it not. You don't buy it with naira and cobalt. Those are mundane things. You use honor to buy truth. You use hunger to buy truth. You use meekness to buy truth. Go to them that sell and buy. There are them that sell in Bauchi. There are them that sell dimensions you have not seen in your spiritual life. Humble yourself and buy. There are them that sell across this nation. There are people who have gained mastery over prosperity. There are people who have gained mastery over character. There are people who have gained mastery over influence. There are people who have gained mastery over their union with the Holy Spirit. Go to them that sell and buy. When you go to buy something in the market, there are times that you go to look for a spare part and people will tell you, oh, if it's for this car, there is only one man we know in this place. Is that true? That was the humility of Saul, the son of Kish and the servant. When the father's donkey got missing, after three days they were tired, they said, let's go back. And the servant said, no. There is a man. I know there is God, but there is still a man. Because God uses men. His system of advancing men is men. There is a man whose word does not fall to the ground. And as soon as Saul met with Samuel, even without talking to him about it, the donkey started going back home. Can I tell you, what looks like a mountain to you is only relative to the kind of grace you carry. There are graces when you encounter it will trivialize your mountain of 20 years and make it look like a mold hill. Challenges are not generic. They are only relative to the anointing confronting it. I can tell you this one by the Spirit. By the privilege of God's grace, I have met so many people in the body of Christ in this nation and across the globe. I am amazed at the kinds of anointings that people carry. Some of them, you don't know them. Some of them are old people. Some of them are not even, they are not even on TV. You don't know anything about them. Phenomenal anointings that they've carried based on light. Go to them that sell and buy. And every time you see them that sell, don't disrespect it. Find out how they got it and they got the authorization to be the distributors of it. A seller is a distributor. How did God trust them with that grace? I will tell you the reason why many of us, respectfully speaking, especially around the north and the middle belt, I did say this in Vouch yesterday, the reason why there is a slow rate of growth, I'm sorry to say it, I am family relative to the region. It is pride. Pride over nothing. Pride over nothing you see I've been to several regions in this nation and there are regions where even if it is a baby that has the solution they can kneel down with us touching what they are looking for but we pray that God will help us can I tell you don't be ashamed of what you don't know open up your heart and learn it you see if you take a candle if I give all these gentlemen candles and you are the first person to have it, when you bring your candle and they light it, we will not even know whose candle lit which ones. Are you seeing that now? Receiving knowledge does not reduce you. It only increases you. I am passionate about learning and knowledge and I honor your fathers in PFN here for leaving their busy schedules to come. It's a lesson for us to learn. If the fathers in the land with what God has done and their many years of experience will come and sit down, it means there is something we need to learn. God is using their life and their humility to teach us something. 
many of us respectfully speaking in their position will not do what they are doing I know has been the plague of the African man I know has been the unbecoming of we in these regions let the man who thinks he knows know that he does not know as he ought to know when I sit down before great people I don't sit as Apostle Joshua Selman I humble myself and I say please I don't know much about this area that area I humble myself like a sponge and I receive with humility when I see people with proven track records and I know they love God sincerely the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise what you are looking for somebody has it already oh what is a dream and an aspiration for you is someone's current realm of reality I gave them a story in Gombe about the first crusade that we had very powerful crusade few people but it was an honestly powerful crusade as far as signs and wonders is concerned because God had helped me in that area very early. I had gotten the keys. People were healed. People were blessed. But this issue of finances and this issue of influence. I believed I was a sincere man of God. And yet not more than 50 people came for the crusade. Publicity, we prayed, we fasted as if I would fall down. And yet with all of that thing, I was grateful of course. But I knew this was not the best. At the end of that crusade, we were owing 150,000. It may not be much now, but just rewind your mind to that time. 150,000 will be millions now. And the sound people were on the crusade ground while I was shouting all the names of Jesus. Healer, provider, is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the people I was owing, they were there just setting the sound, waiting for me. I had pleaded with them to please, for God's sake, allow me to concentrate and finish this crusade. We celebrated miracles and mighty things. Just, I'm, I'm using this to tell you, you can be excellent in an area, but don't use the area of proficiency to mean every other area is good. Naaman was a captain in the Syrian army. A valiant man was he, but he was leprous. Don't use the area of success to excuse the area of darkness. It is your assignment to turn every area of darkness to become light. Are we together? We finished the crusade. I had not paid the small hotel where we stayed. I had not paid the sound. The transport that would take the people back to Zaria. The transport money was not there. I had to tell them to call the driver. I knew somebody in a Nigerian union of road transport worker. And I said they should call them that by God's grace, before they get to Zaria, the gates there, their money will be waiting for them. So the drivers agreed. They went and left me, hotel bills there. The sound people were saying they are not going anywhere. They came from Kaduna. At least I must look for something. And they were serious. And I stood there. This was the preacher that God used. I said, God, how can you use me to heal the sick and save sinners? And you are suddenly acting like you went to bed over these areas. Do you know how frustrating it is to look like you get answers in an area and then in other areas? Can I tell you, most areas of God's silence is the area that your darkness prevails. You must contend for light. I remember pleading with someone who I used to know. I said, please, can you look for 20,000 for me at least? And then they gave me the 20,000. I gave the sound people. And I said, please find your way. You could just go. We will meet and we will settle everything there. God is faithful. Let me at least rest and finish this crusade. When I went back, I said, this is enough. I knew that if I continue to do ministry under that condition, one day I will start lying to people out of pressure. And I attacked that foolishness on time. So that by the time I start operating the prophetic, I will not start telling people lies. You see, let me tell you, most people you see who have deviated are not evil people. It is their carelessness with dealing with areas of darkness that the devil used as an advantage to now haunt them at the time of glory. So when God...
God is beginning with you, he stretches you to make sure you write a list of the areas of darkness and start dealing with them. Because if you allow those areas of darkness, they will become your areas of defeat in the future. I made up my mind. I said, Lord, you are giving me a global ministry and I'm struggling with money to pay sound people. How are you ever going to build? How are you ever going to preach the gospel? How are you ever going to do the things you are doing? And that was when I had this scripture. Go to them that sell and buy. Don't sit in arrogance. Everybody has the currency to buy what you need. Humility is the currency. Meekness is the currency. Passion is the currency. Pursuit is the currency. With a data of 1,500 naira, you can find the information you have been searching for for years. No one is with an excuse to remain at your current level. Many people have sacrificed to put together those information. I made up my mind and today I give God glory that I made that decision. What area of your life are you yet to experience the power of God? Is it your spiritual life? Is it your word study life? Is it longevity? You sleep every night. <laughs> excuse me. You sleep every night and they are trying to kill you. Find the key to longevity before they kill you in real life. If they are trying to kill you from a dream, you think they will spare you physically? Most of us, let me tell you, it is our laxity that allows demonic things from the realm of the spirit to materialize. For one year stretch, every time you lie down, you are in a coffin. Every time you lie down, you are in the grave. What are you doing? You are alive. Go and get materials. Write out the scriptures that talk about long life and study it. That was what I did. Because I travel all the time. I'm in the air. I'm on the road. I'm not afraid of death. But I know my death now will be a disadvantage to the body of Christ and the purposes of God. But just assuming and say no problem, I will not die. Terrorism, wickedness everywhere. I went to fish together the principles that make for long life. And I studied it and found it as a key. Women, there are some of you here that cook very well. Once upon a time you could not cook. You would know when you started learning. Today if we ask you to cook for the over 5,000 people, all you will ask for is just time and the money for ingredients. That's all. You will not be afraid because you've gained mastery. If you ask me to cook for you now, the first thing I'm going to ask you is how many of you? And then I'll say, you must sign that you will eat anything that you see me cook so that I know I'm not wasting my time. And I will be fidgeting there and praying and say, God, why add this? I hope it's not too early. I hope it's not too late. And if I get sad, I just close everything there. And just say, Lord, I've done my best. Let your mercy and favor finish cooking the remaining part for me. That is a reflection of my ignorance in that area. Are we together? But you can tell mama, please can you cook? And mama can laugh and say, how many people? You say 30 people. And she says, only? I thought they were 100. The size does not matter because light is present. They will enter the kitchen and with mastery they can tell you no 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 that size of salt is too much and you are like ah, don't worry and at the end of it it will look as if they measured it with surgical precision this is what i'm trusting god that god will bring you into that you will be so sound in knowledge you will know what to do part time and per season can i tell you the truth please look up some of you after this there are things you will find you will run and go back home and say, Mama, the food you did not eat for me, sit back and start getting ready to enjoy it. That in your lifetime, I will be a consolation, a son or a daughter of consolation. Apostle, people die early where I come from. I understand. But there is something you can do about it. Remember, 
your tears stop when the book is open your tears don't stop when you are tired of crying your tears stop when the book is open for someone God is granting you the grace tonight to open this book you have opened many other books but not this book you have trivialized this book at the expense of many other books you have opened books of worry you have opened books of pain you have opened books of regret but God is telling you there is only one book that is the cure for weeping he called the light day and he called the darkness night we're going to do three things very quickly and then we'll wrap up today number one is we're going to pray and then number two I'm going to speak over your life I promised that I was going to step out and pray and bless those outside this protocol while we're praying let me know if it's convenient provided those outside will behave themselves and not run around to come when I'm outside those outside if you are going to behave yourself and stay where you are and not cause commotion if you will be disciplined outside then I can come out and stand just to honor your sacrifices of sitting outside even through this wind and the rest to speak over your life listen I thank my God today for the times when even through the tears I didn't stop getting light and can I tell you till today in spite of the beats that God has helped in spite of what God has done I still remain a student of light it is a school I will never graduate from can I tell you this the higher you rise the more you need light so do not allow yesterday's success to frustrate you into failure because yesterday's excellence will be today's mediocrity. You will need high level transitory light. Light that shifts you from face to face. Go and find light that relates to your area of wealth and abundance. Don't suffer and punish other people with poverty, giving all kinds of spiritual excuses. You can prosper and still make heaven. Lazarus made it with his poverty. Abraham made it with his prosperity. The choice is yours. Get light over your health. You see how the devil is destroying the health of people today? You need to find out the keys for health. Health. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Go and find the keys that deal with favor you need this one oh. in this wicked world you need favor favor is what gives you an edge in this unfair tribalistic unfair wicked world it is the favor of God that becomes your distinguishing factor that's what took a village girl Hadassah from Shushan and exalted her till she became queen together with the king ruling over 127 provinces go and find light you are in ministry please listen to my teaching that I preached in Gombe yesterday and even this morning find so please hear me when this conference is over that's not the end of it I only came here to stimulate hunger in your heart after this conference go and get teachings write a list of the areas in your life where you have seen darkness clearly take responsibility no more excuses it is not just the government it is not just my pastor it is not just my region i take responsibility and ask the spirit of grace to come and help you become like a spiritual archaeologist in search for truth the bible says for everyone that seek it, find it. Then when you find it, let me tell you what happens. You must obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truth you have found. 
because another word for faith is obedience the bible says the word that we heard the same word they heard is what we heard but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it truth itself does not bless you it is truth that is understood and diligently applied are we together now that ye know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them let me say this before we begin to pray if there is anything at all i sat back there and i listened to your pastor celebrate and appreciate the workings of god upon my life and i was just nodding my head as i was listening to him and i was saying if god's people know that what they think is unique to joshua selman is everybody's inheritance in christ if you can find the requisite level of light can i tell you the difference between you and anyone you admire are three things number one the level of light that that person has found that you have not found number two the level of relationships that that person has in his life that reflect the superior belief system he now has number three the level of engracing that has come to that person in honor to the light he has carried that's what separates men the difference between you the former you and the future you will be greater light and greater power As someone learned those outside you remind me of many years when I stood outside also standing for six hours at a Reinhard Bonke crusade in Joss I was already in ministry at its infancy but I heard that a great man was coming and I left Zaria and I came to Joss outside reminds me of my former self and I stood there watching a man so humble and yet so powerful I remember what he taught very simple message annoyingly simple and when he was done I remember him trying to take water so that he would minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit tens of thousands of people across that ground and my eyes were opened that was the first time I saw a visionary expression of the Holy Spirit I saw a giant bird that was bigger than this auditorium hovering around that entire space I thought other people were seeing it I, I didn't come there to show I was a man of God I came with hunger many of you have heard my story by the second day of that crusade, I made up my mind that I have to find a way of serving and sowing into this anointing. And since I didn't have any money then, I said at least I will sow the seed of service. I was pushing people on wheelchair. To, I was there 3 p.m. in the afternoon, helping to push the people who were going to go to the front. And someone met me and said, I'm not in the committee that should do it. I said, you are joking. You don't know where I'm coming from. And you don't know the hunger that brought me here. True story. As I was moving them, I said, Lord, this is how it will be also in my crusades in the future. Because you see, I know by light that the anointing you honor is the anointing you receive. You cannot receive in the presence of this honor. Let me tell you this. I stood on that ground for six hours. I remember, you may have heard me say in my teaching, there was a pregnant woman who was standing near me. And you know what it means for a pregnant woman to stand. Occasionally she will be tired, she will lean on me. How do you now tell this woman, Madam, please, just, you look like you are a wicked person. I was almost going to say, why did you come to this crusade ground? But after that encounter, I knew something came upon my life. Because tonight, even though our time is up but I can tell you something from heaven is going to land on somebody's destiny for some of you you are outside you are saying I'm far to the gate will the anointing of the spirit touch me 
the God that we serve has an all-seeing eye. He does not just see the faces of men. He sees their hearts. If I had said that time I wanted to see Ren at Bonke, I'm sure the, the military people would have bundled me and thrown me somewhere. But I said I may not see him. But I honor him with all my heart as touching the sacrifice. And something landed from him to my life. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I didn't just come to speak to you and stimulate an appetite. I also came by the privilege of God's grace that something from heaven will rest upon your life. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. For the kings to be born, for revival to return, for the kings to arise, for revival to return. Yeah. Hali, Ali, yo. Ali, yo. Ali, yo. Ali, Ali, yo. Oh, ho. Oh, oh. Ali, Ali, yo. Ali, yo. Ali, yo. Ali, Ali, yo. Now, hear me. We are going to get into a prayer session right now. And please let me encourage you. Don't allow Satan cheat you at this session. Forget about who you came with. And you are going to cry to God. Father, let my destiny become a feast of light from tonight. Light from heaven. As touching the areas of need fall upon my life. Go ahead and pray. Outside pray. Inside pray. he called the light day and the darkness he called night grant me access to the light that turns my night to day man of God are you praying businessman are you praying champion in the making are you praying apostle in the making are you praying prophet in the making are you praying evangelist are you praying kingdom financier are you praying expose my areas of ignorance open me up oh god to the areas I do not have sufficient light. What principle controls lifting? What principle controls spiritual health and wellness? What principle controls prayer fire? What principle controls a healthy word life? What principle controls influence? What principle controls relationships? What principles control character? What principle controls being? Grant me by your spirit. Reveal to me. Someone is praying. Shedekete bakata bakatos kali grande begetis. Impra katos kati la kaparanda shkati la katos. What principle controls complete total deliverance and freedom from demonic forces?
come to pass it, thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to do and to observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. I found it. I found it. It was a revelation to me. I prayed and I said, Lord, as a man of God, I don't want to just produce people who are spiritually healthy and are suffering and not able to contribute to society. And the Lord took me to Genesis 17 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. I will make thee exceeding fruitful, he said, and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you. I believed him. I believed him. When I got to a point in my life where I needed structural establishment, I said, Lord, if you don't help me, how much is one block? How much is land? Except you are a thief. And I found Psalm 44 and verse 3. He said, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their arm save them. 44 and verse 3. He says, but the right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them. When I desired a destiny of color and beauty, a destiny branded with a unique expression of God's grace, I found the key in Job chapter 29 from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, Job said, I remember verse 2. He says, in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me, verse 3, when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness, I found out that there are two kinds of light. There is the one that shines on your head and there is the one that shines on your path. The one that shines on your head is for illumination. The one that shines on your path is for direction. I said, Lord, give me both lights. That was the light that empowered you. He said, by reason of this light, his secrets were upon my tabernacle. The young men saw me and they stood. The aged saw me and they bowed their heads. And I tell you, when you find it in truth, they are life to those who find them. Is someone learning? I prayed for one month studying on the favor of God because I knew that if I ever did ministry or lead my life without the favor of God chances of compromise will be very very high and I said Lord grant me favor what is the secret of favor and the Lord opened my eyes to see it good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressor is hard Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so even Egyptians can favor you and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty Exodus 11 and verse 3 still speaking about favor we are praying I'm challenging you to see the word basis all this balloon success that people rise and fall is because they are not fortified by the word when the word becomes the garrison and the basis of your confidence, you do not need to fear. Because even if heaven and earth fails, not one jot of his word will fail. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh, servants, and in the sight of the people. When I found it, Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. I came from a background with my own share of witchcraft and diabolic things and wickedness. And I knew that there has to be a way to keep this wicked spirit at bay. And I found the key. Psalm 66. Say unto God, verse 1 now or 3, Verse 3. I hope I'm right on that. How terrible art thou in thy works? He 
said through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves when I desired influence not for the sake of self aggrandizement for the sake of the kingdom I found in Acts chapter 12 the first 10 verses control there was a key there that God opened my eyes he said that when Peter was bound hand in chain and there were eight soldiers who bound him the Bible says but prayer verse 4 was made or verse 5 now but prayer was made to God of the church for him and an angel came and loosed him and when an angel loosed him there were three gates that he passed the first word or the first gate the second word or the second gate and he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city there is a gate that opens to the city is the iron gate if that gate does not open you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are outside that city the iron gate that opens to the city I also found the key to influence being that in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 and 3 that Gentiles don't just come to you they come to your light and even their arrogant kings will not come to your light they will come to the brightness of your rising the consistency of your results can I tell you this please go back home and begin a definite project of searching the truth and the keys and the mysteries that control the various areas of your life can i tell you if you spend the whole 2022 finding just three mysteries that work three maybe your spiritual health maybe favor and maybe the power of relationships if that is the only mystery you find you have made this year a fruitful one because when you truly find it it will show let me wrap up by sharing with you a vision years ago i fell into a very serious vision god was showing me the power of knowledge and the corresponding anointing that comes from it the lord opened my eyes and i saw a giant like a gate it was very ancient and when i looked at it i was zoomed into that vision and I found out that that door or that gate was made of smaller doors. And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. And I noticed they were opening and closing, the smaller doors, opening and closing. And every time they open, light will come from it. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that every one of those scriptures and those smaller doors, they represent dimensions of the believer's possibility in Christ every time you catch the revelation corresponding to the scripture written the engracing and the anointing to defend that scripture is released to your life and your life becomes a testament of that profession of faith that means everything you claim to know and you have not received the grace to defend it you do not know it enough remember our teaching on f maybe you have moved from 14 to 35 i congratulate you but it is still f continue moving a day will come your consistency will cross e and c and b and you will now by the privilege of god's grace you will stand tall in the realm of masters he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully is someone ready to pray one last prayer lord i obtain grace and discipline to contend for strategic light I obtain grace and I obtain discipline. I'm about to minister to you now. Grace and discipline. Someone pray. I obtain grace and discipline. I obtain grace and discipline. I obtain grace and discipline.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the mysteries that move us forward is the power and the ministry of the anointing. The anointing is able to come upon a man and cause you to rise. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. He said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet. And Ezekiel had no strength. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit entered into me, and he set me upon my feet. There are times you want to rise. The desire is there, but the engracing is not there. There are three things that will happen right now. Very quickly, I'm going to be ministering, speaking over your life. And then because of time, I'll just pray generally for the sick and the oppressed. And then because of the weather, I may not want people rolling inside and outside. So I'll just do a general speaking, please. Forgive me. I'm sure that another time I hope about you again. This time around, I'm sure that we'll organize it. You will not be in a place like this. We'll look for somewhere bigger and God will give us the opportunity to now minister and prophesy to us in details. And God will grant us grace in the name of Jesus. But my assignment tonight is that something must come from heaven upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are sick in your body, I want you to lay your hands right now where you are trusting God for a miracle. You are sick in your body, please lay your hand right now. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong. In the strength of the Lord, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong strength lay your hands here I want to pray for you I believe in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit many of you you have suffered too long with devilish infirmities that must give way right now as I say in the name of Jesus I want you to shout a loud believing amen both inside and outside in the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every spirit that is back of any infirmity, plaguing anyone here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare, be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Right now I declare be healed in Jesus name. Be healed in Jesus name. From the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every eye condition be healed now in Jesus name. Every bone condition be corrected now in Jesus name pains around the joints and around the back be healed now in the name of Jesus blood conditions hepatitis I decree and declare be healed now in Jesus name migraine pounding migraine headache I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ. Blood diseases of all sorts. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. I bring you life and healing right now. Heart palpitations. 
be healed in Jesus name peptic ulcer be healed in Jesus name all kinds of lumps and growths around your body be healed in Jesus name and every other sickness whether mentioned or not by the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ who is Stephen Stephen now it's going to be difficult to minister because there are so many people outside and um, I'm sure that I will step outside a bit just to speak over them and I don't want people we don't have to bring people outside they would mess up this place with because of the who is Stephen but all the same if you go home dirty and delivered, it's a good bargain. Is there someone with the name Memuna? Memuna. I just heard that name Memuna, whether you are inside or outside. Who, who has that name? Memuna. That's your name. You are a lady. Memuna. Please verify, make sure that. Is that your name, my dear? My friend, the gentleman in white, what do you do? You're a student. I want to pray for you. The Lord is raising you to be a savior to your family. You believe that? Where are you from? Please don't bring people at random. Make sure that they... Madam, where are you coming from? Adamawa. Your name is Memuna. Is the mic working? I'm looking at you and in a vision, I'm seeing a road that I had passed before in Adamawa and it takes me to a place, Mubi. Where are you coming from? Huh? Mubi. Am I doing something wrong? No? Praise God. I'm looking at this woman. I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing a human being. I'm seeing somebody wrapped up by snakes. This is what I'm seeing. I want to pray for you. Can I pray for you? I stretch my hands right now. I command that devil out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. In the name of Jesus, I declare complete deliverance for you. Not only you, but this is a family thing, just tying people down. I release you. This captivity comes to an end. Okay, let me just pray. My conscience will not leave me if I leave this place and I know that I did not pray and minister to you. I'm going to pray right now. I don't know how we are going to do it. But there are people who have been under all kinds of yokes. The power of God is going to come on you now inside and outside you are tired of certain things occurrences of darkness let's see how we can just bring a few here if the space is exhausted that's fine i'm going to begin to pray inside and outside and the power of god will come upon you to bring deliverance even inside this auditorium i'm already seeing people that the power of god will touch father in the name of jesus i declare anyone who has been a victim of the operation of darkness lives and destiny tied down by all kinds of demonic things the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and even holiness and the sons of jacob help that lady right now i'm about to dislodge those devils of darkness 
at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Bring those who are, on, are under the anointing out here. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command every devil. Let them go now. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Please help them whether you are an usher or not. Let me just have them out here. In the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every devil and every spirit. Release their destinies right now. My God, fire is burning here. Inside and outside. All those outside, lift your hands. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. And every planting that is not of God, that devil must give way right now. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Come out of your destinies now. Release your destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. I blot out handwritings and ordinances, ill speakings. Everything that does not name the name of God. I tell you, fire is falling outside by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Now listen. There are some of you here. As you are standing here, you are representing your families. I'm going to pray for you. The power of God will come upon you. But that deliverance is for your entire family. I'm praying again. Lord, I don't know where they are. Families that have been tied down and will not move forward. At the count of three, that anointing is coming upon you now. One, two, three. Take that grace now. I command every devil. Release them now. Release their families now. Please help them. Up the balcony. Outside. Release them now. Release their ministries now. Sir, what do you do? This man. What do you do? Huh? You are a... Huh? Please help us with the mic. Are you, are you in ministry? Ministry. Your own church? You are under a ministry? Yes, sir. What else do you do? I'm going to pray for you. Your fashions will take you to places you did not believe. Look at me, sir. You believe what I'm telling you? I stretch my hands and I declare. Let an anointing come upon you that will give you access to the hearts of kings. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. I release you into a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is someone in this room. You are called into the prophetic. The power of God is coming on you. Right now. Right now. Right now. As I'm speaking. Harakatosh Kadia. I open that season for you. Habarinde Kete Malakata. Spring up her wells. I declare may that dimension be opened now. I open the fountain of the prophetic. This couple. Are you husband and wife sir? Husband and wife. Please hold your hands together. I'm seeing there is a strong prophetic grace. I release that grace right now upon both of you. In the name of Jesus, please help her. I decree and declare, I don't know whether you're in ministry or not, but step into a new season of the prophetic by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. That power is still coming on people. I'm still seeing people inside and outside. There are some of you, God has been working on you. You've been fasting and praying and preparing and building stamina. Something is about to come upon your life. In fact, for two of you, you have seen me ministering to you in dreams. You saw it prophetically. It was like an impartation. I'm praying for you right now. Please help them. Please help them. 
by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God inside and outside right now let that fire fall upon your head in the name of Jesus help that lady please two of you lift your hands these two people you and you these two of you I want to pray for you what do you do you are pastors you are stepping into a new season hear me do ministry with integrity I stretch my hands at the count of three that fire is coming on both of you step into a new season now take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ you will never never be the same by the power of the Holy Spirit you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace hallelujah who works with uba united bank for africa uba i just saw the logo of uba who is that person your season has come come how long have you been with them my dear two years is she the only person i want to pray for you i'm seeing somebody who works in uba there is a very strange lifting that god is bringing for that person i use you as a point of contact I will pray for you but this is who is that person you work in UBA for how long for how long in the name of Jesus I pray for you both by the power of the Holy Spirit that you step into a new level I shift you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ let favor speak for you even right now who has a name Jatau? I don't know if it's your son name Jatau something. There is Jatau. I don't know if it's your name or your son name. Is there someone with that? Please verify, verify before you bring people out. What's your name, ma? What is it? Your son name. What's your what are your full names? Who is Josephine? What's your name? Josephine Jato, what's your name? Give her the mic. Please help us with this mic. I don't know. Josephine. Josephine Jato. Yes, do I know you, ma? I want to pray for you. What do you do? God is going to lift you in a very strange way. Do you believe in the power of prophecy? My dear, shout Jesus as loud as you can. That anointing that has come upon you captivity comes to an end please cover her in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead I bring you life and I bring you victory my Bible says now the Lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty do you read that in your Bible liberty precedes transformation where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty then it says we all the liberated ones now with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from glory even to glory i pray for you josephine jato by the power that raised christ from the dead even within the banking sector find favor i release that grace upon you it begins to speak evidently in your life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there is someone I'm seeing a vision of your loved one I don't know if it's cancer but I'm seeing like their stomach is swelling it's like they have fluid or something within their stomach I'm going to pray for the sick shortly I don't know if there's anyone whether you are inside or outside for sake of time I want to pray for you if you are outside no problem you can just lift your hand where you are I'm seeing someone the stomach is swelling that's your loved one now and it's like they are saying there is a fluid or something inside the stomach. Our time is gone. We have to wrap up. You are
you're the one who is that person your loved one you oh you I hope you are not embarrassed madam what did the doctor say You are the lady that just came out here. Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Okay, place your hand on your stomach. I will pray for you. I will pray for the sick. Now, let me use the opportunity and pray. If you know you or anyone has particularly any kind of growth, whether fibroid, whether any kind of malignant growth or whatever it is around, just lay your hand. You don't have to come out. Just lay your hand where you are. Or if you are standing for someone, please just lay your hand there. I want to pray particularly for those with growths. Whether you are male or female, you are standing for someone, just make contact with yourself. Please lay your hand there. Let's hurry up so we can finish. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. Recorded in his word, hallelujah. This only that's true. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now, using you as a point of contact, madam. Look at me, the woman who came first. Lay your hand there. I'm not a medical person, but I know that once they start detecting this demonic growth and fluid in your body, it's only God that will deliver you. Am I right on that? You see the power of God touching that woman you are holding? That mama? I Please shift for me. Let me pray for her, my dear, the young lady. I'm seeing something being loose from her stomach. This woman, I stretch my hands right now. Out of her now! Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I pray for everyone with any kind of growth, whether it is cancer, whether it is fibroid, whether it is whatever demonic growth. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed right now. Agree with them, say amen. Be healed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bring you life and any spirit that is back of this I cast that spirit in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen is it all right if I go outside for five minutes just to speak words of blessings over those outside and then I come back and we wrap up will that be fine please everyone open your your mouth and begin to pray everyone inside or outside let's begin to pray for one minute those outside, make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Listen to me very carefully. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are thousands of you outside. I want to pray right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. If you can, the immediate space outside here. Everyone, everything that is implanting of darkness. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye.
pray 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 for your destiny salaska de bashka na kata branda kata kato kata branda kata pako tosko to pray kata kala kata the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 